Okay, tonight is the 28th of August, uh, 2011, and this is the second night we are speaking on the Dhammapada. Now we come to verse uh, 44, la, chapter 4, Pupa Vaga, uh, flowers, chapter, verse 44. Who shall overcome this earth, the world of misery and this fear of humans and gods? Who shall bring to perfection the well-taught path of wisdom as, a, as an expert garland maker would his floral design? A striver, 45, a striver on the path shall overcome this earth, the world of misery and this fear of humans and gods. The striver on the path shall bring to perfection the well-taught path of wisdom as an expert garland maker would his floral design. Uh, so, a uh, person striving on the path or knee uh, can overcome the world of misery, uh, the world of suffering. 46. Uh, realizing that this body is like froth, penetrating its mirage-like nature and plucking out Mara's flower-tipped arrows of sensuality, go beyond the sight of the king of death. This uh, world, uh, if we uh, perceive it with our six senses, uh, it looks so real. Uh, but the Dhamma teaches us uh, this is all the workings of consciousness, uh, just like a dream. Uh, and uh, to go beyond the, the sight of the king of death, uh, that means you have, attained, you have to attain the deathless. Uh, when a person becomes an arahan, uh, he attains the deathless. Uh, so there is no self to die, only the body dies. 47. As a mighty flood sweeps away the sleeping village, so death carries away the person of, gr of grasping or clinging mind, who only collects the flowers of pleasure. 48. The destroyer brings under his sway the person of grasping mind, who insatiate in sense desires, only collects the flowers of pleasure. This is one of my favorite verses, 47. A mighty flood sweeps away the sleeping village. Uh, several years ago, there's one village, Orang Asli village, and they call it Sahom. And they were sleeping at night. <clears throat> and the rains brought the locks rushing down the river. And these locks just swept all the houses by the side of the river. Uh, in the pitch darkness, uh, and they are, many people drown. Uh, so in the same way, uh, death will carry away uh, the person uh, with a clinging mind. Uh, when he's enjoying the pleasures of the world, uh, worldly pleasures. Uh. A lot of people are like that. Uh, we never think uh, that death will come and touch us on the shoulder. Uh, so we just go on enjoying life. Uh, uh, and then one day, uh, we are swept away uh, like the Flood sweeping the sleeping village. Mm -hmm. 49. As a bee gathers honey from the flower without injuring its flower, its color or fragrance, even so, the sage should go on his arms round in the village. Yeah. So if a monk uh, goes on his arms round, uh, he's uh, not uh, expecting too much, uh, so it doesn't. Uh, bring harm to the villages, uh, just like the bee. Number 50. Let none find fault with others. Let none see the omissions and commissions of others. But let one see one's own acts, done and undone. Uh, it's very uh, common uh, for people uh, to always look at other people's faults. Uh. But the Buddha always tells us uh, to look at our own faults. Uh. Other people, they have their burden to carry. We have our burden to carry to correct ourselves, to improve ourselves. But like when there are many people, like in the monastery, people tend to look at other people's fault. But always remember this verse 50, look at your own fault. 51. Like a beautiful flower, full of color, but without fragrance. Even so, 
fruitless are the fair words of one who does not practice them. 52. Like a beautiful flower, full of color and also fragrant, even so, fruitful are the fair words of one who practices them. Uh, so it's very important uh, uh, to walk the talk, uh, as they say. Uh, whatever we say, uh, we should practice it. Uh, otherwise, you become a hypocrite. Uh. Number 53. As from a heap, as from a great heap of flowers, many garlands can be made. Even so, should many good deeds be done by one born a mortal. Uh, so when we come into this human life, uh, a lot of people, uh, we lead a very selfish life. Uh, and uh, at the end of life, uh, we, we regret, uh, we are remorseful. Uh, a uh, good life uh, is one uh, where we not only benefit ourselves, we benefit as many people as we can. Uh, mm. Fifty-four. Not the sweet smell of flowers, not even the fragrance of sandal, tagara, or jasmine goes against the wind. But the fragrance of the virtuous goes against the wind. The virtuous person pervades all directions with the fragrance of virtue. Mm. Sometimes we do something uh, uh, unwholesome uh, and we think nobody knows. Uh, but uh, all the devas and devis and all the ghosts will know. Uh, uh, all the spirits will know. Uh, uh. So in the same way, if a person is virtuous, uh, all the spirits also will know uh, because they are psychic uh, and read our mind. Uh, so if a uh, virtuous person, uh, uh, the, that's why the fragrance pervades all directions. Uh, all the spiritual beings know. Uh. 55. Of all the fragrances, sandal, tagara, blue lotus and jasmine, the fragrance of virtue is by far the sweetest. 56. Fain is the fragrance of tagara and sandal, but the fragrance of the virtuous is excellent, wafting even among the gods. Uh, so even the gods also know uh, if a person is virtuous. 57. Mara never finds the path of the truly virtuous, who abide in vigilance and are freed by perfect knowledge. If a person is freed by perfect knowledge, that means he becomes an arahan. So when he passes on, uh, then the consciousness stops. Uh, then uh, Mara will try to find where the Arahan is reborn, uh, but he can never find uh, because the consciousness of the Arahan uh, doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, take rebirth. Uh. Mm, this is found in our suttas. Uh. There were, uh, I think, there were two Arahans who passed away, uh, and uh, different times. Uh, and uh, the Buddha went to see, uh, and then after that the Buddha told his disciples, he looked in the distance, a black cloud uh, flying here and there, and they say, yes, they see, and then the Buddha said, that is Mara trying to find the consciousness of the Arahant, uh, but the Buddha said uh, he can never find, uh, because the consciousness has stopped. Mm -hmm. 59, the consciousness has stopped means the dream has stopped, uh, the dream of life. Uh, uh. 59, 58 to 59. As upon a heap of rubbish in the roadside ditch, blooms a lotus, fragrant and pleasing. Even so, on the rubbish heap of blind worldlings, the disciple of the supremely enlightened one shines resplendent in wisdom. Uh, another example the Buddha gave is like in a pond, uh, lotus. Uh, although the lotus... Uh, uh, takes root uh, in the mud, uh, but the flower goes above the mud, goes above the water uh, and blooms. Uh, uh, so even so, uh, is a person uh, who becomes enlightened. Uh, chapter 5, Bala Vaga, the fool. Mm. 60, long is the night to the sleepless, long is the league to the weary, long is worldly existence to fools who know not the good Dharma. Uh, and we cannot sleep at night. Uh, the hours seem to go by so slowly uh, as we toss and turn on the bed. Uh, uh, 
So when a person is tired also, la, the league, la, league here in Pali is the Yojana. La. It's supposed to be 10 kilometers distance. La. So if you're very tired, la, you have to walk another 10 kilometers. La. You uh, find it very tiresome. La. So similarly, la, when we turn in Sangsara and we suffer, then uh, Sangsara is very long. La. But when you understand the Dhamma, and you get right view, huh? then you are on your way out. 61. Should a seeker not find a companion who is his better or equal, let him resolutely pursue a solitary course. There is no fellowship with a fool. Huh? So on the spiritual path, huh? if we uh, have a companion huh, who is better than us, huh, more advanced spiritually huh, or equal to us, huh, then we can discuss Dhamma. Huh? Uh, we don't want to associate with fools, uh, uh, wasting our time. Uh. 62. The fool worries, thinking, I have sons, I have wealth. Indeed, when he himself is not his own, whence are sons, whence is health? Uh, a lot of people, uh, we have property, a lot of people have property, of children and all that. Uh, so it keeps worrying about the, ch the children, keeps worrying about the property. Uh, but uh, Buddha says, huh, even your own body doesn't belong to you. How can your sons and your property belong to you? Huh? They're all on loan to us. Huh? If our karma is good, we have more things to use. Lah. But not a single thing huh, belongs to us. Lah. It's only for us on loan huh, to use huh, because of our good karma. And then after a few more years, huh, we will pass on. I have to leave it all behind. Huh? We cannot even bring our, our body with us. How can we bring all our property? 63. A fool who knows his foolishness is, a, is wise, at least to that extent. But a fool who thinks himself wise is called a fool indeed. Some people, they are not so smart. At least they acknowledge they are not so smart. But the, the big fool is the one, he's, he doesn't... I realize that he's a fool, but everybody sees that he's the biggest fool. 64. Though all his life a fool associates with a wise man, he no more comprehends the Dhamma than a spoon tastes the flavor of the soup. 65. Though only for a moment a discerning person associates with a wise man, quickly he comprehends the Dhamma just as the tongue tastes the flavor of the soup. Even if we were to live uh, together with an arahan, uh, uh, if we don't take the trouble to find out uh, about the Dhamma, about the spiritual path, uh, then we don't know anything about it. Uh. So if a fool associates with a wise man, uh, he doesn't have the wisdom to ask uh, and to understand. Uh, uh, so you won't get a taste of the Dhamma. Uh. 66. Fools of little wit are enemies unto themselves as they move about doing evil deeds, the fruits of which are bitter. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, uh, we are our greatest enemy uh, if we do unwholesome deeds. La. But if we practice the Dhamma and do wholesome deeds, uh, we are our best benefactor, la, our best friend. 67. Ill done is that action which, having been done, is repented later and the fruits of which one reaps, weeping with a tearful face. 68. Well done is that action which, having been done, is not repented later, and the fruits of which one reaps with delight and happiness. If we do something wrong uh, and we regret it, uh, uh, because we have a conscience, every one of us uh, has have a conscience, but sometimes because of greed, hatred and delusion, uh, we refuse to listen to our conscience. Uh. But uh, even though you refuse to listen to the conscience uh, and do unwholesome action, uh, the day will come uh, when you realize uh, uh, that uh, you did wrong and you will regret. Uh. Uh, but if you did wholesome action, uh, then you'll always be happy uh, that you did it. 69. So long as an evil deed has not ripened, the fool thinks it as sweet as honey. But when the evil deed ripens, the fool comes to grief. Uh, so when we do evil, uh, we think nobody knows uh, and we enjoy it. Uh, 
Uh, for example, cheat people, commit adultery and all that. Uh, and we are enjoying the fruits of it. Uh, but when the vipaka comes, uh, the karma ripens, uh, then uh, we have to pay uh, uh, with uh, interest some more. 70. Month after month, a fool may eat his food with the tip of a blade of grass, but he is still not worth a sixteen part of those who have comprehended the Dhamma. <coughs> this eating uh, food uh, with the tip of a blade grass probably refers to the austerities, uh, the ascetic practices uh, of the external sect ascetics uh, during the Buddha's time. Uh, the Buddha says uh, all that, uh, the not worth uh, comp at all uh, compared to those who comprehend the Dhamma. Comprehending the Dhamma, there are many various levels. Uh, if you attain the vision of the Dhamma, then you become an Arya. Uh. 71. Truly an evil deed committed does not immediately bear fruit, like milk that does not turn sour at once, but smoldering, it follows the fool like fire covered by ashes. Uh. So sometimes you do an evil deed. Uh. Some people, uh, uh, they don't see the result immediately, uh, and so they don't believe in karma vipaka. Uh, but uh, at the end of life, uh, and then they know. Uh, so even if they don't pay for it at the end of life, uh, sometimes a few lifetimes later, uh, they still have to pay for it. Uh. 72. To his own ruin, the fool gains knowledge, for it cleaves his head and destroys his innate goodness. Um, this knowledge is uh, worldly knowledge, la. nothing to do with the Dhamma. La. Some people, they have knowledge. Yeah. The more they learn, la, the more they arrogant they become. La. Uh, so, uh, harms himself. La. 73. The fool seeks undeserved reputation, precedence among monks, authority over monasteries, and honor among householders. Uh, this refers to a monk, a foolish monk who wants fame, uh, wants uh, uh, seniority and honor, etc. 74. Let both laymen and monks think that it was done by me in every work, great and small. Let them follow me. Such is the ambition of the fool. Thus his desire and pride increase. Uh, this similarly uh, is about the foolish monk uh, who wants recognition, uh, who wants fame and all that. 75. One is the quest for worldly gain and quite another is the path to Nibbana. Clearly understanding this, let not the monk, the disciple of the Buddha, be carried away by worldly acclaim, but develop detachment instead. So here he's talking about the monk. Sometimes we monks wear the robe and they forget that the duty is to practice the spiritual path. They get carried away by fame. And then uh, there are some monks, uh, they do a lot of worldly things. Mm. Now we come to chapter 6, uh, Pandita Vaga, the wise man. 76. Uh, if one finds someone who points out faults and who reproves, one should follow such a wise and sagacious person as one would guide, as one would a guide to hidden treasure. It is always better and never worse to cultivate such an association. 77. Let him admonish, instruct, and shield one from wrong. He indeed is dear to the good and detestable to the evil. Uh, this one, if you can find a teacher or somebody uh, who can point out your fault, uh, the Buddha says, uh, uh, don't go away from him. Uh. As for monks, uh, the Buddha said, uh, if you find a teacher, can tell you your faults and correct you, uh, then you, until your end of your life, uh, you should stay with him. Uh. But people who don't want to change, uh, don't want to admit their wrongs, uh, uh, they detest such a person uh, who points out their faults. Uh. Sometimes you see in everyday life, uh, you see some people, uh, they have some fault, uh, you try to be good, uh, you try to uh, tell them their fault, uh, and they get angry. Why? Because they never look within. Uh. They always look outside. Uh. Never look at themselves. Uh. Always look at other people's fault. Uh. Never see their own fault. 
So when you tell them, uh, they get angry because they don't believe it. Uh, their eye is turned outside, never turned inside. 78. Do not associate with evil companions. Do not seek the fellowship of the vile. Associate with good friends. Seek the fellowship of noble persons. Uh, this one, the other time we, we uh, went through the uh, Diganikaya Sutta. What's the name? Sigalovada Sutta. Talking about good friends and um, false friends. Uh, uh, so, but the best friend uh, is a noble person, uh, Arya. 79. One who drinks deep the Dhamma lives happily with a tranquil mind. The wise person ever delights in the Dhamma, made known by the Noble One or the Arya. Uh, so, um, if we practice the Dhamma and then we become happy, we have a tranquil mind if we meditate. Uh, number 80. Uh, irrigators regulate the waters, arrow makers straighten the arrow shaft. Carpenters shape, shape the wood, the wise control themselves. Uh, just like the irrigators, uh, they can control the waters uh, and the arrow makers, uh, the shaft, carpenters, the wood. Uh, so the wise control their mind, don't allow the mind to control them. Uh, 81. Just as a solid rock is not shaken by the wind, even so the wise are not affected by praise or blame. Mm. If a person is affected by praise and blame, uh, then he uh, is still very worldly. Uh, if you are intent on the Dhamma, then um, you don't bother whether people praise you or blame you. Um, 82. On hearing the teachings, the wise become perfectly purified, like a lake deep, clear and limpid. That is, if you put the Dhamma into practice also. 83. The good renounce everything. The virtuous do not prattle with a yearning for pleasures. The wise show no elation or depression when touched by happiness or sorrow. Uh, it's quite similar. There are eight things uh, supposed to able to move us. Uh, happiness or sorrow, gain and loss and all that. Uh, the eight winds, uh, the Chinese call. Uh. 84. He is truly virtuous, wise and righteous, who neither for his own sake nor for the sake of another does any wrong, who does not crave for sons, wealth or kingdom, and does not desire his own success by unjust means. Person is uh, wise uh, if you understand the Dhamma, uh, and when you understand the Dhamma, you know uh, that uh, life is impermanent, uh, and uh, very soon we have to go uh, and we have to let go, uh, whether we like it or not. We have to let go of everything in the world. So it'd be better if we let go earlier. Uh, then you're free to do what is important. Mm. Eighty-five. Few among human beings are those who cross to the, fur to the further shore or the farther shore. The rest, the bulk of people, only run up and down the hither bank. Uh, this one sometimes we, we chant, uh, the Pali. Apakate manu sesu yejana paragami no atayang itara pajati rameva no davati. So, uh, 86. But those people who act according to the perfectly taught Dhamma will cross the realm of death, so difficult to cross. Uh, so the bulk of human beings, uh, we are all on this side of samsara. Uh, only those who practice the Dhamma become an Arya, then you cross over the realm of death, uh, which is so difficult to cross. Uh. 87 and 88. Abandoning the dark way, let the wise man cultivate the bright path. Having gone from home to homelessness, let him yearn for that delight in detachment so difficult to enjoy. Giving up sensual pleasures with no attachment, the wise man should cleanse himself of defilements of the mind. 
When a monk, when a person goes forth into homelessness, uh, there is a lot of difficulty. Uh, but most of this difficulty is physical, uh, physical suffering. And then if he practices uh, meditation uh, and attains tranquility of mind, one-pointedness of mind, uh, then he attains uh, uh, mental happiness. Uh, uh, so that mental happiness uh, more than pays uh, for that uh, uh, physical suffering. Uh. 89. Those whose minds have reached full excellence in the factors of enlightenment, who, having renounced attachments, rejoice in not clinging to things, rid of asavas, glowing with wisdom, they have attained nibbana in this very life. So one who practices the uh, bhujangas, uh, uh, the factors of enlightenment, uh, and then, uh, then he attains liberation, uh, that is attaining nibbana in this very life. Uh. Uh, sometimes people think of nibbana in, in terms of the, the afterlife, uh, but nibbana is attained in this life itself, uh, can be attained. Uh. Now I come to chapter 7, Arahanta Vaga on the Arahan or the perfected one. 90. The fever of passion does not exist for one who has completed the journey, who is sorrowless and wholly set free and has broken all ties. Uh, this Arahan has no more passions. Passions referring to anger, um, lust, and all that. Uh, 91. The mindful ones exert themselves they are not attached to any home. Like swans that abandon the lake, they leave home after home behind. So a person who has <coughs> attained uh, liberation, uh, anywhere he goes, uh, he's not attached to the place. Uh, so he moves from place to place uh, without any attachment. 92. Those who do not accumulate and are wise regarding food, whose object is the signless, the unconditioned freedom. Their track, like that of birds in the air, cannot be traced. <clears throat> Those whose asavas are destroyed and who is not attached to food, whose object is the signless, the unconditioned freedom, his path, like that of birds in the air, cannot be traced. Mm. So the Arahan, no? He has no more self, uh, so cannot be traced. 94. Even the gods hold dear the steadfast one, whose senses are subdued, like horses well trained by a charioteer, whose pride is destroyed, and who is free from the asavas. Uh, we saw before uh, in the Dika Nikaya that uh, these uh, devas uh, from far away, uh, they come. They know there's an arahan, uh, they pay respect to the arahan. Uh, from high up in the sky, and they'll bow down to the Arahans. 95. There is no more worldly existence for the steadfast one, who, like the earth, resents nothing, who is as firm as a high pillar, and as pure as a deep pool free from mud. 96. Calm is his thought, calm his speech, and calm his deed, who, truly knowing, is wholly free, perfectly tranquil and steadfast. Um, so one refers to the Arahan. Mm, like the earth resents nothing. This earth, uh, in the Sutta, the Buddha says, uh, if you spit on the earth, uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't, uh, the earth doesn't feel anything. If you burn the earth or so, uh, the earth doesn't uh, complain. Uh, so in the same way, uh, Arahan uh, is unmoving. Mm. 97. The man who is, without blind, who is without blind faith, who knows the uncreate, who has severed all links, who has destroyed all causes, and who has thrown out all desires, he truly is the most excellent of men. Uh, this also refers to the Arahan, uh, who knows the uncreate. Uh, mm. Ninety-eight. Inspiring indeed is that place where Arahans dwell, 
be it a village, a forest, a vale, or a hill. Wherever Arahans dwell, uh, that place uh, is peaceful, uh, according to, I think, another sutta. Mm. 99. Inspiring are the forests where worldlings find no pleasure. There the passionless will rejoice, for they seek no sensual pleasures. In the forest, uh, uh, where the animals abound, uh, you don't have the normal things uh, that human beings enjoy, uh, worldly uh, pleasures. Uh, so, uh, worldly people uh, don't like to go to such a place. Uh, but those on the spiritual path, uh, they like such quiet places. Uh. Now we come to chapter 8. Sahasa Vaga, the thousands, verse 100. Better than a thousand meaningless, meaningless words is one meaningful word, hearing which one attains peace. 101. Better than a thousand meaningless verses is one meaningful verse, hearing which one attains peace. 102. Better than reciting a hundred meaningless verses is the reciting of one verse of Dhamma, hearing which one attains peace. So, like uh, we do chanting, uh, uh, it is important uh, to understand the meaning of the chants. Uh. If you don't understand, uh, then it's no, no benefit uh, to, to chant. Uh. So that's why some um, monks, uh, they prefer to chant in the local language. Uh. But are, the majority of monks, uh, they are quite uh, attached to the tradition. Uh. For example, even like... Uh, reciting the Patimoka, the, the, the uh, monks' precepts. Uh, uh, most uh, Theravada countries, uh, we still chant in the Pali. Uh, but the problem is not, not all the monks understand the Pali. Uh, so sometimes they, they just do it uh, because it's a tradition. Uh, but uh, a lot of it uh, is not understood. Uh, if you want to understand it, then you have to chant it in the local language. Uh, mm. 103. Though one may conquer a thousand times a thousand men in battle, yet he, yet he indeed is the noblest victor who conquers himself. 104 and 105. Self-conquest is far better than the conquest of others. Not even a god, an angel, Mara or Brahma can turn into defeat the victory of such a person who is self-subdued and ever restrained in conduct. So, the best uh, victory uh, is victory over oneself, uh, not victory over other things in the world. Uh. Mm. Worldly people, uh, we would like to make a conquest uh, on the share market, uh, make a conquest in business and all that. Uh, but uh, all those are not important, because in a few more years' time, uh, when we have to pass away, uh, not a cent uh, we can bring along with us. But our good karma, we can bring along with us. Uh, 106. <coughs> Though month after month, for a hundred years, one should offer sacrifices by the thousands, yet if only for a moment one should worship those of developed mind, that worship is indeed better than a century of sacrifice. 107. Though for a hundred years one should tend the sacrificial fire in the forest, Yet if only for a moment one should worship those of developed mind, that worship is indeed better than a century of sacrifice. People like to make sacrifices to heaven, to pray for all the things we want. People offer sacrifices and ask for this and for that. But if you do it month after month for a hundred years, uh, that merit, that blessings uh, is so little uh, compared to uh, paying respect uh, even for one short moment uh, to a person with developed mind. This person with developed mind uh, uh, can refer either to a person who has attained jhana uh, or a person who is an Arya. In the, in the suttas, it is mentioned uh, that if you... Uh, do 
ร้องนะ to uh, ordinary person นะ uh, the the vipaka uh, is a certain amount นะ but if you do a wrong นะ to a person who is, who is uh, passionless นะ meaning uh, a person who has attained jhana นะ person has attained jhana he has subdued his passions นะ Then uh, the offense uh, is much much bigger. Uh, for example, uh, even doing dana, the Buddha said, uh, if you do dana to, uh, for example, a human being uh, who has no sila, no precepts, no moral conduct, uh, you can get back. Uh, you expect to get back uh, about one thousand times uh, what you give. Uh, and uh, if you give to a virtuous person uh, something, uh, a virtuous human being. Uh, Then uh, when the karma ripens, uh, you can expect to get back. I think something like a hundred thousand times uh, what you give. Uh. But uh, if you give to a person with a developed mind, uh, uh, this uh, person who is passionless, uh, who has attained jhana, you can get back a uh, hundred thousand times, a hundred thousand times, uh, which is uh, very very much. Uh. But if you give to an arya, uh, then uh, the uh, What do you say? The merit or the blessings uh, is uncountable, uh, uncountable. So, in the same way, uh, mm, if you worship one with the uh, who has attained jhana, it's uh, very great uh, the merit. Uh, but if you worship one or pay respect to an arya, then it is very, very it is uncountable. Uh, the the blessings is uncountable. Uh. Verse hundred and eight. Whatever gifts and oblations one seeking merit might offer in this world for a whole year, all that is not worth one fourth of the merit gained by revering the upright ones, which is truly excellent. Mm. So a bit similar, lah. Uh, you make offerings, ah, uh, uh, for a whole year, lah. Uh, it cannot compare uh, to. Being respectful uh, to upright ones. These upright ones can mean those who practice the Dhamma, and can, can mean uh, the Aryans. Uh. Hundred and nine. To one ever eager to revere and serve the elders, these four blessings accrue: long life and beauty, happiness and power. Ayuvano sukang balang. This is often in our chants. Uh. So if you you respect na uh, and serve those who are worthy of respect na, uh, those who the considered here uh, elders na, uh, then you obtain na. Uh, Ayu is long life na, uh, Vano is beauty na, uh, Sukha is happiness na, uh, and Balang is strength na uh, or power. Hundred and ten, better. These four things are also uh, when uh, in the suttas uh, is mentioned uh, that uh, if uh, if you make constant offerings to uh, renunciants, lah, uh, food offerings, lah, you can get these four things also, lah. Mm-hmm. And then ten, better it is to live one day virtuous and meditative than to live a hundred years immoral and uncontrolled. And then eleven. Better it is to live one day wise and meditative than to live a hundred years foolish and uncontrolled. And then twelve. Better it is to live one day strenuous and resolute than to live a hundred years sluggish and dissipated. And then thirteen. Better it is to live one day seeing him rise and fall that means impermanence lah than to live a hundred years without ever seeing rise and fall lah or impermanence lah in the world lah. And then fourteen. Better it is to live one day seeing the deathless than to live a hundred years without ever seeing the deathless. Hundred and fifteen. Better it is to live one day seeing the supreme Dhamma than to live a hundred years without ever seeing the supreme Dhamma. y e a h seeing the supreme Dhamma means understanding the Dhamma. Sometimes when you understand the Dhamma and you get right view, sometimes it is called Dhamma Chaku, uh, and that is translated as the as the eye of the Dhamma. Or the vision of the Dhamma. Uh, so here is referring to seeing the Dhamma. That's what it means, lah. Understanding the Dhamma. 
So if we live uh, all our lives uh, and we don't practice a spiritual path, uh, that is a wasted life. Uh, better uh, if you even live one day rather than a hundred years. Uh, it will be a more benefit to you uh, because you go for a better rebirth. Uh, that to waste a hundred years uh, enjoying all the worldly pleasures, uh, all the human pleasures, uh, and then pay for, pay for it in tears uh, in the next lifetime. Uh, so as we uh, mentioned, I think, last night, uh, that uh, if a person does not practice the spiritual path, uh, he's considered dead, uh, as good as dead. Hokkien wa kong kisi ka ho. Maybe we have time for another chapter. Papa Vaga, evil. Papa is evil. Chapter 9, 116. Hasten to do good and restrain your mind from evil. When one is slow in doing good, one's mind delights in evil. Um, the Buddha says uh, our mind is constantly changing, constantly changing. So once you have a, a determination uh, or an ambition to do something good, uh, you must quickly do it. Uh, and then if you have uh, an intention to do something unwholesome, uh, then you better postpone it. Uh, maybe and maybe uh, think about it again. Uh, and you think about it uh, more than once, maybe you might not do it. Uh, so. Here it says, uh, to do good, uh, you must do it quickly uh, and restrain your mind from evil. But when you have an intention to do good uh, and then you postpone, uh, you delay, uh, then uh, it's more likely uh, you, you won't do it. Uh, instead, uh, you do evil. Uh, mm. So in the same way, uh, if we have a bad habit, uh, uh, then we must quickly change it. If we don't quickly change our bad habit, it gets stronger day by day. For example, laziness. If we, if we allow ourselves to be lazy, day by day it becomes stronger and stronger. And then after some a long period, to change is very difficult. 117. Should a person commit evil, let him not do it again and again. Let him not form a desire for it, for painful is the accumulation of evil. Uh, the Buddha said in the suttas, uh, whenever we do any karma, we re must reflect on it. Uh, before we do something, uh, we must reflect whether that karma is skillful or unskillful. Uh. Skillful means it is beneficial to us or beneficial to others. Uh, and unskillful means it is uh, harmful uh, to us or harmful to others. Uh. So, if it is harmful, we don't do. If it is beneficial, we do. So, uh, if we constantly uh, reflect before you do an action, and also while you are doing an action, and even after you have done an action, it doesn't matter after how long you reflect on your action, then you always keep improving. If you don't always reflect on your actions, then you uh, become blur blur la. you don't uh, don't realize uh, whether you did good or you did evil uh, so it's always good to reflect uh. so if you know you did evil uh, don't do it again and again uh. sometimes we do something wrong uh, then we say uh, maybe you do something wrong to somebody uh, and then you say sorry uh, sorry sorry and another day you do it again <laughs> and then you say sorry again but no point. Uh, instead of, uh, you don't even have to say sorry. Uh, just don't do it again. Uh, and that's the best thing. Uh. Under 18, should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him form a desire for it. For blissful is the accumulation of good. Uh. So if we know uh, we do something is good, uh, we should keep doing it. Uh. Uh, and then we will never regret. Instead, uh, we get a, ha a lot of happiness from it. Uh. It reminds me, uh, last time, uh, I've said this before, uh, one of the devotees told me, one lady in Penang, uh, she said the mother died of cancer. Uh, when she died of cancer, her face was in great pain. Uh, 
But one after one hour after she was uh, said to be clinically dead, uh, the face changed, uh, became very happy and uh, bright, and uh, so you can see uh, that she was uh, going to a good place, uh, Because uh, so this uh, when we are dying, uh, although the doctor says that uh, this person is dead, uh, it takes another one or two hours before that person is actually dead, uh, and during this one or two hours, uh, the mind keeps going. Uh, keeps going. Uh, and these last thoughts, uh, we have no control over them. Uh, so it depends on your karma. If you have a good heart, uh, you always think of good things. Uh, so uh, like this lady, uh, after one hour, she had a very happy place, uh, face. Uh, we show she went for a good rebirth. Uh, but if your heart is no good, uh, then you have a frightening, frightened face uh, because you see an uh, evil, uh, woeful place of rebirth. Uh, Hundred and nineteen. It may be well with the evil doer as long as the evil has not ripened. But when it does ripen, then the evil doer sees the painful results of his evil deeds. Hundred and twenty. It may be ill for the doer of good as long as the good has not ripened. But when it does ripen, then the doer of good sees the pleasant results of his good deeds. Uh, so it's very easy to do evil uh, because our human tendencies uh, are greed, hatred and delusion. That's our natural tendencies. Uh, and we follow our natural tendencies uh, and then uh, uh, we do un unskillful karma. Uh, but if it has not ripened yet, uh, you think you enjoy life. Uh, but when it does ripen, uh, say on your deathbed, uh, uh, then you'll have to... And you'll have a lot of remorse la, and fear. La, uh. But if a person does good, uh, sometimes it's difficult to do. La, uh, but uh, when it ripens, uh, then you... For example, if a person walks a spiritual path, uh, practices a spiritual path, and so sometimes there's a lot of suffering. La. For example, if a person renounces uh, the first one year, uh, or the mind uh, always keeps going back to the home. La. Always keeps going back to home. So there's a lot of suffering. Uh, but if he persists, uh, grit his teeth and bear it, uh, then after a few years, uh, when the karma ripens, uh, especially on the deathbed, uh, then you see the, the devas coming with a chariot uh, to bring you up to the heavens. Uh, uh. 121. Do not think lightly of evil, saying, It will not come to me. Drop by drop is the water pot filled. Likewise, the fool, gathering it little by little, fills himself with evil. 122. Do not think lightly of good, saying, It will not come to me. Drop by drop is the water pot filled. Likewise, the wise man, gathering it little by little, fills himself with goodness. Uh, so our actions uh, determine our character. If we constantly do good, uh, and our character uh, changes for the better. But if you constantly do evil, uh, then uh, you, your, your character inside you uh, changes, uh, changes in, uh, correspondingly. Uh. 123. Just as a trader with a small escort and great wealth would avoid a perilous route or dangerous route, uh, or just as one desiring to live avoids poison, even so, should one shun evil deeds. Uh, so we should avoid evil deeds, uh, like avoiding poison. Uh, when you take poison, uh, you will suffer uh, great pain, uh, or you will die. Uh, even so, uh, when we do evil deeds, uh, either we suffer uh, great pain uh, in the woeful plains, uh, or we die again and again. Uh, for example, animals uh, get killed. Uh, by other animals are eaten up. And then they're reborn as animal again and get eaten up again and again. Mm. 124. If on the hand there is no wound, one may even carry poison in it. Poison does not affect one who is free from wounds. For him who does no evil, there is no ill. So if your hand uh, is, uh, there's no uh, wound, uh, and there's no open wound. Even you carry poison, you are not afraid. So in the same way, if, you, if your conscience is clear, even people blame you, even people talk bad about you, 
you're not affected. Lah. You know uh, that you are pure inside. Lah. This reminds me last time when I was uh, in Thailand, uh, staying in the forest. Uh, we stay alone uh, in the in the certain areas, uh, and uh, at night, uh, uh, when there's no moon, uh, and it uh, becomes a bit frightening. Uh, the dark night, uh, and you can hear the sound of animals. You can hear the sound of the tiger and all that. Uh, in such a time, uh, when you when you examine yourself, uh, and then you realize. Uh, you have come here to practice uh, with a very noble intention uh, and your precepts are pure and all that uh, and that gives you great courage uh, and you are no more afraid. Uh. Uh, so in the same way, uh, if your heart is pure, uh, your heart is good, uh, whatever happens, uh, you are confident uh, and not afraid. 125. Like fine dust thrown against the wind, Evil falls back upon that fool who offends an inoffensive, pure and guiltless man. So if a person talks bad about somebody who is pure or does anything against him, and then just like the wind will throw, throw back the fine dust that you throw on you, so that person will suffer. That's why like... A, uh, in uh, in uh, this uh, Chinese Buddhism, uh, they say, uh, uh, be very careful and uh, don't talk bad about monks. But in the Sutta, the Buddha said, uh, four kinds, four persons, uh, uh, be very careful uh, how you conduct themselves towards these four persons. Uh, four fields of merit and four fields of demerit. Uh. If you are good towards these four persons, uh, your merit is very great. Uh. But if you do wrong towards these four persons, uh, your 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 this uh, vipaka, your karma is also very heavy. Uh, the first one is the Buddha. The second one is the disciples of the Buddha, meaning monks and nuns. Uh, and then the third is mother. The fourth is father. Uh, 126. Some are born in the womb. The wicked are born in hell. The devout go to heaven. The asava free attain nibbana. Uh, so after dying, uh, we are reborn in different places according to our karma. No? The arahan will enter nibbana. One two seven. Neither in the sky nor in mid ocean, nor by entering into mountain clefts. Nowhere in the world is there a place where one may escape from the result of an evil deed. Uh, Sometimes you do evil, uh, and for example, the police is chasing uh, the criminal. Uh, he wants to go and hide here, hide there. Uh. But when karma chases us, uh, there's nowhere we can hide. Uh. One, two, eight. Neither in the sky, nor in mid-ocean, nor by entering into mountain clefts. Nowhere in the world is there a place where one will not be overcome by death. Mm. A lot of people, we don't want to die. Uh, and uh, you find some people... They, they leave a will uh, after they are dead uh, uh, to uh, embalm their body. Yeah? There are some people, they spend a lot of money to uh, embalm them, their, their, their body. They hope uh, maybe in a hundred years' time people can find a way to revive their body. <laughs> okay, we uh, stop here. Anything to discuss? Mm, tonight you're going to have a good sleep. Ma. <laughs> Rain coming, going to be very cold. This, uh, the Buddha says uh, you cannot find an Arya outside the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, so like nowadays, uh, Buddhism, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, sorry, Hinduism, a lot of hin Hindu teachings uh, were affected by the Buddha. So now you find a lot of uh, Hindu teachings, uh, they incorporate the Buddha's teachings. Uh, so if they practice the Noble Eightfold Path, like the Buddha taught, uh, so you can find Arya there also. So it's not just Buddhism, it's wherever the Noble Eightfold Path is found.
So does it mean uh, Sama Samadhi, uh, they, they able to have jhana or Samadhi, but without the uh, Buddhism scripture or Dharma understanding, uh, is that correct to say that uh, the sunset would, would not be able to have Sama Samadhi? Oh no. Sama Samadhi is defined as the four jhanas. <clears throat> so if an external sect, uh, ascetic, uh, attains the four jhanas, uh, he has Sama Samadhi. But because he doesn't have the other factors, uh, the other seven factors, uh, so he cannot become an Aryana. Mm. There are, besides Sama Samadhi, in the uh, suttas we find the Buddha talk about Aryan Sama Samadhi. Aryan Sama Samadhi is the four jhanas supported by the other seven factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. This is a time of Q&A, so if there's anything you're all uh, doubtful about, nah, I suggest you ask, nah. otherwise your doubts cannot be resolved. Either the teacher points out his fault or he sees it himself. Now, if he understands the Dhamma, he practices according to the Dhamma, guided by the Dhamma, he can uh, correct himself. No? Uh, but the teacher will only tell you your fault uh, if he thinks uh, that you are uh, happy to hear it. No? Uh, so if a person is not happy to hear, the teacher won't tell him his fault. Mm. Yes, but uh, those disciples uh, who want to be uh, told their faults, uh, they will seek such a teacher. Uh, a lot of people, uh, they don't want uh, to go to a strict teacher because they don't want to be told their faults and uh, made to change and all that. So... Um, if the if the uh, disciple uh, is uh, uh, willing to learn, I uh, should go to a strict teacher. Mm. Like for me, yeah, I'm not one of those who like to find out people's fault. So that's why I say yeah, that uh, uh, this is not a training monastery. So it's better uh, for people who want to be trained uh, to go to a strict monastery, yeah, like in Thailand, uh, forest monastery, and get some training there and then come back here. Um, I'd rather not. Uh, uh, have new disciples because I find uh, sometimes uh, a lot of a lot of people uh, they are so far off uh, from the from the training uh, that uh, 
it's too difficult uh, to, to change them. And I'm uh, here, uh, we don't have the time, we don't have the, we are so short of manpower, we don't have the time, we don't have the uh, inclination the, to teach also. So it's better young monks go elsewhere to train. Mm. It's more for matured, matured people, uh, this monastery. saying uh, even just by paying homage yeah, uh, the merit is far more uh, than making all the sacrifices uh, to heaven so if you uh, learn from the teacher even even more meritorious you know? Okay, there's nothing. Can we end here?